A very good morning to one and all present here. On behalf of Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, I take immense pleasure in hosting the World Ocean Day Celebrations 2022, jointly organized by Colonel Dr. JPR Research Park, Center for Ocean Research, and Department of Visual Communications, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, supported by the YASH NCSTC DST program. With the blessings of the Almighty and our beloved Founder Chancellor, Colonel Dr. JPR, we've all gathered here today for this wonderful occasion. I take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to our patrons, Dr. Maria Zina Johnson, Honorable Chancellor, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, Dr. Mary Johnson, President, our Vice Presidents, Ms. Maria Bernadette Tamilarasi and Mr. J. Arul Selvan, for their constant guidance, support, and encouragement in all our endeavors. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. T. Sasiprabha, Honorable Vice Chancellor, for the constant support and guidance. On this momentous occasion, I welcome all of you, the participants, to this program, and I invite Dr. B. Sheila Rani, Director of Research, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, to deliver the program highlights. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah. Good morning, all. So it's my immense pleasure to welcome you all for this online expert talk and a live theater show on the collective action of ocean, which is being jointly organized by our Center for Ocean Research uh, in Colonel Dr. JPR Research Park, and also by the Department of Visual Communication, who is giving always a constant support to us uh, from our Satyavama Institute of Science and Technology. This is being conducted in association with our MOES ESTC and also jointly with the YASH NCST DST program to commemorate this World Ocean Day 2022. Uh, the purpose of this World Ocean Day is known to all of us, mainly to create awareness to public on the impact of humans, uh, human actions on the ocean, to develop a worldwide movement of citizens for the ocean, and also to mobilize uh, the population on the management of the world ocean. So this is being uh, now done by our Center for Ocean Research. So the celebration of this World Ocean Day, I feel uh, our Center for Ocean De Research uh, deserves to do this. Uh, so our Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, who is pioneering towards the science and technology through the Center for Ocean Research, we are conducting this program today. A few words about our Center for Ocean Research, their main uh, job is like uh, they are uh, giving their contribution in the form of giving solutions to the problem objectives that is being defined by the ministries. So they take up such type of objectives and they are trying to give solutions through the sponsored research projects. And in fact, we are happy that our Center for Ocean Research has got a very high end instrumentation facility also, which not only serves for the scientists of our own center, but also to various faculty members of our, our own institution and as well to other institutions and also they conduct a lot of workshops and awareness programs for the school students to create an impact on the ocean. So these type of works are being taken up by our scientists of Center for Ocean Research. Also, whatever the findings they give, findings they get it so that they are publishing it and make it aware of the, to the society. So a lot of publications, they are giving it with a high impact factor publications in journals and also they have a very good H index, H index and I10 index of, uh, that itself serves as a major uh, contribution by our Center for Ocean Research to Satyavama Institute of Science and Technology itself. And they are also keenly involved in development of a lot of products that has gone up to the level of marketing through our technology business incubator on this bi marine bioresource utilization. And also they have a patented lot of uh, products, whatever have been developed, not only design patent, but also product patent. Uh, they have developed it. These are all the certain credits uh, of our Center for Ocean Research Scientists. Uh, in addition, Always, uh, all these things happen because of the support that is being provided by our uh, Department of Science and Technology through the FIST program, wherein they are able to develop a very good infrastructure through this uh, uh, funds for infrastructure of science and technology through this DST program. 
they are also being recognized through our nste tb tbi under the under the main core area of marine bioresource utilization through which they have uh, established a good infrastructure and as well they were able to go in for development of lot of products uh, with the aim of marine bioresource utilization they have done it and again they are being supported by the department of biotechnology dbt for conduct of courses also like they are running a pg diploma program two to three programs they are running so where in the students of almost 10 to 15 students the number being already identified 18 students have already been identified by dbt so they were able to take up this course in one year they were all given the placement also that care is also being taken by our scientists of center for ocean research so that program is also running successfully through the support being given by the department of biotechnology and the latest one is our always right from the beginning so our center for ocean research which has been established in the year 2007 so for almost i should say more than 13 to 14 years of its uh, existence in satyabama they are able to sustain themselves and they are able to show a good output also so with that they are able to go for uh, with ministry of earth science support now they have received a fund of around 4 crores wherein they are able to run the earth science technology cell that is being supported by the ministry of earth science and now our satyabama center for ocean research has been identified as a nodal center for marine biotechnological studies so these are all certain achievements of our uh, uh, center for ocean research now coming to the program that is going to be organized today for this world ocean day so in order to insist the awareness on ocean health and also to bring the importance of the need of science communication today we have with us our chief guest dr r kribakaran sir who is consultant of the deep ocean mission pc6 from the niot ministry of earth sciences so in this platform i should also thank our research collaborations through our institutes always niot national institute of ocean technology and cmlre are the major supporters for us in carrying out any type of research for all the scientists from uh, these two institutes they collaborate with the scientists of our center for ocean research they help them in all the ways and they are able to keep up and they are able to carry out certain works means the successfulness for all these things lies behind niot scientists as well as uh, cmlr scientists in particular to say about uh, uh, dr kribakar and sir Uh, i think before i took this position uh, all, almost right from 2007 onwards uh, sir was closely associated with our center for ocean research whether it is the recruitment of the faculty in center for ocean research or purchase of any equipment for our infrastructure development whatever it is all sorts of right from writing the proposal that is where uh, the help remains like sir was behind us like a backbone and he was supporting us like anything till date so really thanks to us sir a lot and uh, it's our pleasure to have you on this world ocean day thanks once again sir for accepting our invitation in spite of your busy schedule so uh, dr kribakaran sir uh, uh, like his guidance uh, and also his esteemed association uh, i think each and every scientist are utilizing sir's uh, experience and his expertise uh, in uh, taking up each and every action whatever we are doing it so particularly to emphasize on this world ocean day 2022 theme revitalization collective action for the ocean so what our center for ocean research jointly with our department of visual communication they have designed this event with an expert talk by dr kribakar and sir on the topic of oceans health is the nation health and wealth followed by a theater show on collective actions of ocean by the students team of the department of visual communication so with this i am happy to see the nationwide registration i could see a heavy number of registration also for this event it's almost a nationwide i should say so as a final note i wish all the participants to use this platform in a best way and be aware of the oceans and the need of the hour to protect our oceans so let us all stand together for revitalization collective action for the ocean thank you thank you ma'am i now take great pleasure in introducing our esteemed expert for today's session dr akribakaran who was formerly scientist g 
and project director marine biotechnology program at the national institute of ocean technology ministry of earth sciences government of india chennai dr kribakaran obtained his phd from the banaras hindu university in the year 1989 and during his doctoral course he successfully carried out studies on the molecular neuroendocrine control of reproduction in catfish awaiting research fellowships from the department of environment and forest and the council of scientific and industrial development csir subsequently he worked for 2 years on genetic manipulation of catfish at bose institute under the department of biotechnology sponsored post doctoral training program he also worked as a visiting scientist of science and technology agency at the national research institute of aquaculture nansei japan He joined National Institute of Ocean Technology in 1998 and successfully carried out many societal improvement projects like breeding, larval rearing and fattening of lobsters and mud crabs, deployment of fish aggregating devices in Andaman, Nicobar and Lakshadweep island groups and the emplacement of artificial reefs along Orissa coast. He was also coordinating the Ocean Science and Technology for Islands program at Andaman and Nicobar islands. He was also one of the principal investigators of two multi-institutional programs, namely Coastal Ocean Monitoring and Prediction System and Development of Potential Drugs from Ocean. Dr. R. Krabakaran also successfully demonstrated the open sea cage culture of fin fish at Kottanchatram, Pamanji, Rameshwaram, and at North Bay of Port Blair in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Subsequently, he focused on the mass scale culture of marine microalgae for the production of nutraceutical compounds such as lutein, phycocyanin, and astaxanthin, etc. Towards achieving mass scale culture, he developed tubular photobioreactor, bubble column reactors, solar powered raceway systems. Electrofoculation of microalgae was another technique developed by him for harvesting large quantity of marine microalgae. He also applied the above techniques. for the production of biofuel from marine microalgae he developed a program on the development of in situ culture facility for deep sea microbes for the first time in the world high pressure and low temperature serial dilution systems and high pressure and low temperature fermenters have been successfully designed fabricated and demonstrated for the first time using deep sea microbes he has also identified over 40 marine microbial strains in this process dr kripakaran has published more than 200 research papers in reputed national and international journals and has edited five books and contributed for eight patents he also is a serving member of the board of studies in marine biotechnology and microbiology program at different universities he was also recognized as a supervisor for guiding the phd students in many universities and also served for the preparation of the white book on the current situation and course of actions for sound chemical management in small and medium sized enterprises in india jointly done by the chs convention project chemical safety sri ramchandra university and the plymouth marine laboratory he has also served as an expert member in various committees using deep sea fishing of government of puducherry project implementation agency under the tsunami reconstruction project of the government of puducherry bay of bengal large marine ecosystem of fisheries survey of india open sea cage culture of national fisheries development board etc dr kribakaran is also the life member of indian science congress association association for the promotion of dna fingerprinting and other dna technologies society for reproductive biology and comparative endocrinology indian society for comparative endocrinology and ocean society of india dr kribakaran also served as a member of task force committees of aquaculture and marine biotechnology and marine bioprospecting and bioenergy of the department of biotechnology ministry of science and technology government of india he has also served as a member of the coastal aquaculture authority ministry of agriculture national biodiversity authority ministry of environment forest and climate change and member secretary of the national task force for ballast water management ministry of shipping he also served as the co-chairman for the preparation of national mariculture policy for the country It's a great honor in welcoming you today and having you with us for the talk today sir over to you sir Thank you respected madam dr shila rani director research sadhi bama institute of science and technology dr inbakandan head center for ocean research 
Dr. Nasmi, Head Department of Visual Communication, other conveners and the co-conveners of this event. And most importantly, the participants from various other organizations who are present online for this DST sponsored program under YASH NCSTC. Good morning to you all. At the outset, I am very happy that Satyabama Institute of Washington, uh, Institute of Science and Technology is conducting a very vital, important program on this Well Ocean Day celebration. I will just brief about some of the basics in the marine on the marine biodiversity. As all of you know, the oceans cover almost 363 million square kilometers, which is almost two thirds of Earth's surface. Out of this, more than 40% of the population, global population, live within the 100 kilometer from the coastal line. Coastal and the marine resources are mainly shared by the coastal people which are accounting to 37% overall. Coming to the ocean economy, which is an, uh, also an important uh, issue, it determines various uh, co competition level between the various parties. So the fisheries and aquaculture almost contribute to the $100 billion business every year. And also, the employment and the ecosystem services, which uh, almost uh, it generates 260 million jobs of opportunity at the global level. Again, almost around six trillion US dollar per year. And there is no doubt such a huge business volume will lead 90% of the trade between the countries. So the overall shipping industry contribute through the transportation of all the commodities, which comes roughly around 90%. And again, the coastal areas are the attraction for the more for more than 50% of the tourists, which is who are all preferring the coastal areas. And it also accounts for nearly 25% of the GDP of many small countries. The marine biodiversity, as all of you know, it, it is the habitat of more than 10 million marine organisms, which includes marine microbes as well. The phytoplanktonic community itself generates over 50% of the oxygen on the earth. In addition to that, the anthropogenic carbon emission, the coastal and the marine vegetated ecosystem serves as a sink and replenish the carbon emission, especially the greenhouse gases uh, like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, uh, aerosol, etc. The biodiversity are, with regard to microbial population in the deep ocean, it is very, very little known and a lot of research is happening now. And every year, more than 200, uh, two, 2000 new species have been reported from the marine environment alone. This all contributes the, to the marine biodiversity importance and the requirement for the future studies. The health and the nutrition is the two important aspects when we see the ocean as a huge uh, biosphere. Human health is one of the important aspects and uh, many tropical diseases are uh, 
stress uh, happening in the tropical environment mainly due to the global warming and uh, Dear participant, sorry for the inconvenience caused. There is some technical problem with the virus internet. So kindly. Uh, go for medicine as well. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, okay. sir. So today I will just discuss about the three important major activities, which is so environmental friendly, and it was demonstrated by the National Institute of Ocean Technology, Ministry of Air Sciences, Government of India. The first one is the open sea cage culture. For, it will be followed by fish aggregating devices and the artificial reef. These are all attempted just to develop the entrepreneurship in the uh, open sea cage culture and also to encourage the society, uh, coastal communities for their own day-to-day uh, -day earnings by the artificial reef and the fish aggregating devices. So if you look at the fish uh, consumption through the aquaculture and also capture fisheries, it was uh, from the year 2008 to 2030, the total capture fisheries and uh, culture fisheries were much lesser. Now, the aquaculture based on the uh, capture fisheries and the cult culture fisheries, it is going up. So this trend will again boost up by 2030. We will largely depend on the culture fisheries. Uh, and especially on uh, through open sea cage culture. When we talk about the any fish production, it is always uh, uh, estimated in terms of uh, fuel used per ton of fish which are caught. So there are uh, different methods fishermen engage. One is trawler, uh, trawling, creel, long lining, and artisanal trawl, gill netting, and pursing. So among all these, if you look at only trialing operation uh, fetches more, but uh, there are a lot of unlawful activities. The fisherman is uh, mainly they use a lot of uh, the nets, which are all very small mesh size, which is not permitted by the government. So it creates a lot of problem and uh, it vanishes our fish biomass uh, in a very short period. So at this juncture, we should train them and we should develop entrepreneurship through the open sea cage culture. So for this purpose, actually we have to design and development the cages according to Indian coastal and offshore conditions for marine fin fishes. So this is the one of the cages of nine meter dia, which was uh, fabricated and uh, deployed in the offshore conditions 
In the offshore condition, we initially tested over three different places. One is uh, 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 the semi-protected environment, which is close to the Rameswaram. The place is called the Volaikuda. And the second place is the uh, Nellur, which is the open, she open sea. And the third place is the North Bay in Andaman Nicobar Island, which is the fully enclosed bay. So these are the di three different environmental conditions we selected and tested our cage after stocking. This is our uh, former secretary, Dr. Shailesh Noyak, inaugurated the seed. So I want to show you the sh short video here about uh, the harvest of this particular uh, uh, cage culture practice, how it has yielded the uh, maximum growth. This technology is fully uh, environmental friendly, no pollution threat, and also the carrying capacity one can measure and regulate. And by this way, if we are taking this uh, culture practices using our 1% one per one of exclusive economic zone, we can produce 3 lakh tons of uh, more than five, uh, five to six species of the uh, our Indian native fish, spe uh, fish species. So this technology is uh, going to come up in a big way. So there are several organizations are working. You can see even in rough condition here, how the harvest is going on. They are harvesting after feeding this, uh, particularly for over so, uh, 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 roughly six to eight months, depending on the species. This is one of the species called Cobia, uh, that is Rachis and Ron Canadum, uh, scientific name. After the eight months, it reached the size of around 3.5 to 4 kg size. It is being because in this particular uh, approach, the local coastal fishermen were employed and also trained and now they are capable of culturing the fishes. The only drawback here is the availability of feed and seeds. The seed production in the country is at a very poor level. We have to go for offshore based, offshore platform based nursery rearing system unless we take in a challenging manner the land-based uh, uh, nurseries will not be able to support. So here the harvest is, uh, you can witness the harvest. And of, of course, this is the milkfish. Various type of fishes were harvested. And uh, although the, now the, uh, the coastal communities and the fishermen are trained, the problem remains the same. So. Many other aspects need to be addressed, including the uh, mariculture policy for the nation. So the video has to be stopped. Yeah. These are the food, uh, you can see milkfish, cobia and pampano. These are the three different species for that weight gained in gram for different days is shown. And uh, of course the growth is uh, uh, very much encouraging, but uh, we have to see the FCR and also the better uh, feed options for these species to improve the economy. And uh, during this, we also tried a specially designed nursery cage, which were deployed within the grow cages. So by the way, the, we could achieve the 90% survival uh, at the end of the nursery seeing a nursery rearing. It's one of the big achievement, I can say, 
because even the land based nursery rearing system will not yield that much uh, result and this is the small 2 meter dia cages which were deployed uh, in the growth cages and next activity is fish aggregating devices which is mainly for the lakshadweep group of islands for the uh, fisherman community who are all really uh, doing well with the tuna fishing uh, we fabricated the uh, nearly 8 fads for uh, the lakshadweep groups and also 10 fads for uh, Uh, Andaman Nicobar groups, and this is almost a three meter uh, dia cylindrical HTP pipe, which is uh, fit, uh, filled with uh, more than two fifty kilogram of concrete at the bottom, and also filled with uh, this uh, polyurethane foam, and then sealed at the top after fitting with the uh, marker uh, lamp. these were all taken to the sea and before that biancy were tested in the acoustic test facility of the nioot and the fish the even the testing was done in the off chennai coast this is a marker lamp fitted with the most assembly you can you are seeing and these are the various sites where uh, in lakshadweep group of islands the minikai kalpeni petra chetla kilt and these are the islands and their latitude longitude details are here here in the using the sagar manchicha research vessel we carried and deployed at various places in both island groups you can see a small video how it was done this is the tuna fishery is one of the important fishery of the lakshadweep group of islands these people uh, the fishermen are very happy about this structure which is deployed and uh, they need not to roam around the uh, sea for fishes they can go to this site and they can capture the fisheries uh, they, they can capture the fishes tuna fishes which are all coming around this uh, devices this is uh, due to the scientific principle actually
Creator, the Prophet God the Even uh, after the two years, by the way, uh, uh, loss happened in the uh, nylon rope, which make it most of the time by uh, by some sort of uh, uh, undue happenings by the strangers or even fishermen community themselves through the when they are uh, going with the boat without the, knowing the uh, um excuse me sir sorry to interrupt uh, yeah. uh, sir uh, the video's audio is uh, too loud sir your voice is not audible sir okay uh, you can just reduce the volume at the bottom of the screen, sir. Oh, okay. Video volume. Video volume. Uh, now, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now you can see several boats, more than uh, 15 boats are around the fish aggregate places coming around. They do not roam into the sea for uh, Several days. As you can see, the boat in a couple of hours, so that they save a lot of money on well, also money. Most important time is also saved. So one of the excellent technology without the of the ocean environment, they are really enjoy. Sir, sorry, sir. Sir, completely on the video sound that coming from it, sir. And then you can know, face the thing properly. You can move the audio. Video or video or audio. So, it has a high appreciation among the public. And also one more activity, what we have given to the coastal community is the design fabrication and the uh, emplacement of artificial reef. It has been done along the Orissa coast. In this approach, we actually, it is a UNTB sponsored program. We got almost 80 lakhs for encouraging the fishermen, that is uh, uh, mainly the coastal uh, fishermen at uh, three important villages called the Pentakota, Chantrapaka and Palinolachia. These are the three villages where we deployed the artificial reef, which are all almost square type and a triangle type and dome type. These are the concrete structure made uh, at the Kobalpu fishery uh, harbor and they have been taken to those villages by road and uh, we engaged the every in every villages the fishermen and their boats actually to deploy to deploy to the respective sites this is a uh, where they, are, they call it a stepa. They carried and then placed over the tepa and uh, driven into the sea. And just uh, not more than one kilometer distance. And the place is also earmarked actually by the marker boys. The area where this uh, uh, what is uh, artificial reef are placed. Uh, you can see the accumulation of uh, that uh, biofouling, a lot of barnacles and the barnacles and the mussels and the clams, they are all getting attached over this structure and it becomes the habitat of several fishes subsequently. So within six months, such a biodiversity buildup occurs in the artificial reef 
now you can show live video this uh, many species including grouper which have be, which has not been reported earlier started appearing in this area you know the cost of the grouper and that to live trade of grouper if you, they are uh, trained to capture live and export it it will fetch very huge amount of uh, yearning to them but you know, these people they can uh, it will uh, actually discourage their trawling so that the big the those who are all encouraged in the trawling operation they cannot go because of their uh, net will be torn if they do the uh, trawling in that area so the uh, only traditional fishermen who relies on uh, this uh, uh, line and hook methods they will go and capture the uh, fishes regularly by that way if they spend a, a couple of hours they will be easily getting uh, near about uh, 10 to 12 kg of fishes per day that means they can sell it in the market within a couple of hour earning somewhere 1000 to 1200 rupees per day so this is the constant income uh, generated for for these three villages and uh, even today those people are using this site and uh, it is very much helping for their uh, regular yearning this is one of the other successful stories and uh, to uh, much further extend this work we can also design some of the artificial reef structure which can be helpful in uh, sea erosion also coastal erosion so that way the fisherman community will get multiple benefits not only for the uh, fish capture it will also uh, help them to uh, the, the coastal villages be protected from the coastal erosion it will be a, certainly uh, a sponsored program because of the livelihood uh, generation is most important for the fisherman community instead of uh, giving lot of money on the biofuel Sorry, fuel, as uh, diesel or petrol, they are all going as uh, subsidies for this fisherman community so that it can be avoided. This type of facilities can be uh, generated for their day to day living. So, then I just uh, I want to conclude with uh, the microbial works, what we are working with the uh, deep sea that I will try to complete because this uh, deep sea microbes are all uh, living at a, say about 2000 to 6000 uh, meter depth which is highly so that they are all um, uh, mostly, uh, mostly you can see both of the population of pisophilic and pisotolerant fishes sorry pisotolerant microbes microbes in the sense I mean the bacteria fungus and uh, actinomyces uh, everything so we have designed uh, uh, some sort of culture system where you can culture the marine bacteria which are all pisophilic or pisotolerant in, uh, in nature at the same culture of that uh, in situ condition we can maintain the temperature we can provide the nutrients whatever uh, they need to uh, optimize the growth rate, etc. So in that way, we have uh, uh, cultured and for that we have uh, made certain objectives actually, how to collect and then how to purify or isolate and how to optimize their uh, uh, nutrient requirements and then uh, for uh, bioactivity testing and uh, finally the whatever the product like antimicrobial peptides or uh, whatever the drugs we are looking for the characterization of such type of leading molecules 
this is a conventional rosacite water sampler what you are seeing and uh, also through the sediment uh, corer we can collect the sediment sample and bring to the laboratory but uh, these are the very conventional system but uh, what we have this is the some of the deep sea microbes which are all cultured this is the deep sea fungus so those are all first initially identified during the culture for morphological identification and then biochemical identification and uh, then mo uh, molecular characterization using 16s rrna and 18s uh, rdna techniques and then uh, the optimization studies of growth rate by uh, their uh, carbon sources or uh, altering the nitrogen sources at various ph and uh, temperature and uh, salinity the growth is optimized and uh, bioactivity is tested this uh, mic uh, using the microplate sorry uh, petri plate say and then uh, this activity is tested by zone of incubation by measuring uh, mainly the known human pathogenic strains uh, and uh, some of the anti tumor activity also we are studying uh, especially uh, some of the deep sea fungi showed a considerable amount of growth inhibition of tumor cells uh, cell line a549 uh, at a lowest concentration of 10.7 microgram uh, etc then the antibacterial analysis also been done these are the various human pathogenic strains at the laboratory and uh, the purification for antimicrobial peptide through the talum chromatography uh, we carried out and the gcms analysis also by that way we are identifying some of the key molecules like this 4 methyl 5 thio so ethanol or five pyrazine derivatives these are the uh, few names to uh, inform but uh, there are uh, some more uh, interesting compounds are under analysis this is the high pressure uh that is the fermenter serial dilution system and fermenter as soon as we bring the microbes because we use the deep sea uh high, high pressure sediment some water sampler also since from the time of collecting the sample in the sea without exposing to the normal temperature or normal atmospheric pressure we can bring to the laboratory and uh, we can serially dilute it and uh, cultivate using the fermenters and uh, we have the chiller and the ph uh, can be maintained by acid and uh, alkaline pumps and also nutrients can be also parallelly pumped so that uh, the, the, the desired dilution is achieved before uh, taking for culture activities i will show you a small video here how the sample is collected from the sea and then uh, this is the rosette where we fit this uh, high, uh, high pressure low temperature uh, water sampler this water sampler are now uh, descended from the mother ship at the speed of near about 5 uh, uh, to 6 meter uh, per, uh, sorry 10 meters per minute uh, descending down and also we are taking out at the same speed uh, carefully and you can see these are all some sort of jellyfishes population were uh, at that place so after washing the uh, rosette we uh, these are the various uh, this, this is actually the water sampler which goes at a particular depth and open this is the team which worked for collecting the deep ocean water and it was brought to the laboratory and then uh, transferred to the fermenter uh, the serial dilution system and uh, fermenter and uh, cultivated samples are further analyzed so this is the status where we are working to see the bioactive some uh, bioactive substances and uh, novel metabolites from the deep sea microorganisms so in this process also our sampling actually we do 
without harming the uh, ocean, uh, ocean uh, bottom. If once when we are taking the sampling and it is also planned there, uh, some of the novel culture bank to be maintained for subsequent studies so that each and every study, whatever is attempted so environmental friendly and in a sustainable manner, uh, that is the, this is the high time we have to, uh, before going for any technology for further uh, trans, uh, transforming to the any industry or any uh, societal uh, communities, we should uh, analyze the advantages and disadvantages. This is going to be the major uh, problem unless the technologies are tested, whether it is sustainable and environmental friendly, it may not uh, uh, going to be uh, contributing for long run. So with these few notes, uh, I want to thank you all for your uh, patient hearing and uh, I thank uh, uh, Dr. Sheila Rani and the other faculty of Sajivama Institute of Science and Technology for giving this opportunity to uh, present in front of uh, so many participants. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Sonia. sir. Sonia. I'm as here, are, sir. As we are running short of time. Yes, sir. Hello, one or two questions. Uh, are, uh, hello, one or two participants to interact with, sir, if they have any queries. Yes, sir. Participants, if you have any questions, you can put forth to the speaker or type them out in the chat box. Any questions from the participant side? You can type them out in the chat box. I think the Dr. Sendhulpuri is that what interact with, sir. Yes. Uh, Sendhul, sir, your voice is not audible. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, now audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in overall, it, it's a very uh, experienced uh, explanation. So, very deep. Uh, Whatever works you get it out, which will be very useful, uh, definitely uh, in making the ocean health and uh, human being wealth health. Thank you, thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions from the participants' side? Can we put forth to the speaker? Or you can type them out at the chat box. So one clarification, Yes, sir, please, sir. Uh, sir is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, he is there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Regarding that FAD, hmm. uh, whether uh, have you attached any appendages? Yeah, appendages. In uh, yeah. And then only the aggression will be uh, efficient. Yeah, yeah. You, you could have seen in the video the appendages. Appendages, uh, I couldn't be uh, able video. to see. Okay, uh, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, appendages is very essential for yeah. uh, encouraging the fouling in that. Uh, then only the it will come to the surface and uh, the fisherman can capture easily. Yeah, uh, you are right. Appendages uh, were there. Okay, okay. Uh, Describe, but uh, appendages were there. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello. I think uh, Dr. Kinesh want to interact with sir. Kinesh, you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thanks for the excellent presentation, sir. It's uh, it shows uh, your hard work and uh, you know uh, the practical implications. What's happening in India? So my question is like being a researcher. It's an individual researcher. Uh, to achieve this kind of thing, it's it's almost impossible as in asking some questions, right? So. So in that case, like I have two questions. One is related to the uh, fishery culturing. 
then second is related to the artificial rain so the fish culture you have deployed it and you have harvested it so curious to know is there any other scientific uh, research is happening in that place uh, through any you know research organization really wanted to answer some questions like disease ecology for example if you grow that one together there is a possibility of disease right so that's the one question and second one in artificial reef like there are so many uh, hard work is needed to deploy it uh, so so is there any other work apart from you know documenting it like uh, coral recruitment or any accumulation of bacterial community that facilitate other organism to grow up so if not like what is other possibility of being like a researcher to approach and initiate that kind of work yeah coming to your first question i think what you asked the is there any other work going on on open sea cage culture similar to this one uh, yeah so in the artificial culturing mm. is there any scientific questions like understanding of disease ecology a disease any additional ecology yes disease yes yes yeah this is uh, one good question disease is very common for any culture uh, organisms depending on the carrying capacity and the fish uh, stocking density you can avoid the problem for example we selected three places one is the semi enclosed bay in andaman sorry fully enclosed bay in andaman and a semi enclosed bay in uh, uh, rameshwaram and open sea at nello both yes. open sea and fully enclosed bay we could not encounter any disease problem but in very close coastal water of uh, rameshwaram the place olaikuda we entered a lot of disease problems because it was due to uh two reasons one there was not that much a underneath water current and the second aspect there were many aquaculture ponds mainly the shrimp ponds were very close to the site from there the extra nutrients the unfed were drained off into the sea which created the more high nutrients and pathogenic load in the water that's what we concluded the when we do it in open sea there is no opportunity of diseases provided if you stock it up in a, an optimized manner are you clear now ah uh, yeah yeah that is very clear sir thanks okay. sir Uh, so in that like i want to know for example if i when being a researcher if you want to do some research in that particular deployed uh, environment is it possible through collaboration or anything like if yeah, that is the case approach yeah. the organization like a central marine fisheries research institute okay. who are doing in cage culture at various okay. places niot is doing only very limited place but okay. cmm fra is the and they have uh, both in west and east coast lot of uh, their uh, laboratories and uh, close to the site they have the field uh, experimental cages so that is the one organization and the second is the rajiv gandhi center for aquaculture they are also engaged in uh, cage culture but uh, time to time central institute of brackish water aquaculture also they deploy the cages these are the three organization in addition to national institute of ocean technology you can approach thank you thank you sir for any such type of studies thank you thank you yeah. thank you sir any other questions from the participants thank you very much i have a question sir as you said uh, Uh, there is a need of a seed and feed for the open cage format so what is your advice to the young researchers uh, on how they can proceed for those things yeah the feed and the seeds are the 
major bottlenecks before we take it at a very large scale. Uh, the field can be a problem can, we can overcome provided we get more seed consistently. Because once when you start practicing the open sea cage culture at a huge level, the feed companies, although they are mostly from abroad, which gives a good FCR, they will come and they establish their feed mills here. By that way, there won't be any shortage of feed and the feed cost also can be minimized because of uh, the land cost and also labor, uh, very low cost labor in India. But a seed aspect, by, uh, through my experience, we, we can go for some research, uh, RAS system, but uh, many organizations, including CM4A, RGCA, everybody is attempting, but still the success rate what the country is requiring, we are not able to achieve. We cannot blame this organization because their mandate is only technology transfer. So they develop the technology, but the private hatcheries are not coming up to that extent. Alternatively, what I propose, we have to go for nursery rearing. You can um, breed them in a uh, Cage a brooder also you can develop on the offshore, bring to the uh, hatcheries and uh, get the uh, fish fingerlings. After reaching one or two grams, you again shift to uh, grow pond, uh, the cages in the offshore condition where the disease problem is not there. And also in small cages, they won't spend much energy to go around and it will be also fed in a very concentrated manner. That way we can avoid, that will give much success. It is out of my own experience I propose. Thank you, sir. Actually, Dr. Inbagam, yes, uh, I want to clarify some uh, your, uh, of your doubts. Here regarding that seed, uh, whatever sir told is correct. But now recently, uh, our ICI Institute, CMFRA and SIBA, uh, very seriously progressing, significantly progressing. Almost we transfer the technology and in near Kumta uh, to BFOC students, they have taken the technology and they, uh, they are operating on a big hatchery. Within a short time, four to six months, they have uh, realized almost uh, two crores uh, in sling. Uh, either fry or uh, fingerlings alone. So initially, they will be getting the uh, eggs, uh, uh, egg from our uh, hatchery, Siba. Then they will be doing uh, larval rearing and fry uh, culture rearing. And up to fingerling, they are rearing in their own hatchery. So uh, another two hatcheries are in pump line. So significantly, we are progressing uh, in uh, seed production of almost seven species. Now, almost in uh, among seven species, uh, one or two species, we are in a very high level uh, seed production. So, this only points, sir. No problem, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. the private operators are coming. Yeah, the, that is a significant uh, progress. Overcome because there are also a lot of species, native species. We have to develop the technology and uh, go for it. So uh, these are the two important uh, things. Yeah. Uh, uh, encouraging and increasing the number of private hatchery operators and uh, attempting the different type of native species. We should not end up only with the sea boss or seeds for uh, cobia like that. We have umpteen number of uh, fish uh, species. species, everything should be attempted to their uh, commercial level. Yeah, now uh, by seeing the uh, involvement of private hatchery, one hatchery alone, the one uh, foreign company is starting. Now they landed up in uh, North India near Pune. 
uh, already they have uh, started operation from september they will be producing the uh, uh, starting from larvae to grow out the feed up to eight amount so that also uh, significantly progressing it's a very good news significant yeah. progress uh, has been yeah. achieved i think since we are working constantly yeah. they have come forward to establish their mill mm. yeah now we are going to buy from them only so yeah, yeah. price uh, rate uh, in their court itself uh, came down very good yeah so it will uh, we are in the very near this is what i expected some 5 years before yeah all it takes uh, things are very slow in our country unless some uh, very serious action is not taken it will not move so yeah, let it happen let us see thank you sir thanks uh, to sir as a listener thank you sir thank you sir thank you uh, we will be now moving on the students of viscom department yeah. are here present us with a live theater show i hand over to now play the video can you able to hear the sound now sir no 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 so i'll play sir so stop போ <laughs> கரைக்கு போனா மட்டும் என்ன அங்கேயும் பிளாஸ்டிக் குப்பைய போட்டு எடுத்துட்டாங்க என் குட்டியால கடலுக்கே வர முடியல ஜோ பர்ரா தலைவர் திமிங்கல வராப்ல என்ன திமிங்கலம் சம்ம வேட்ட போல அடே நானே வயிறு வலியில இருக்கேன் என்னாச்சு அடே ஏண்டா கேக்குற நான் சாப்பிடும் போதே வயிறுக்குள்ள ஃபுல்லா பிளாஸ்டிக்கா போய் அதனால ஒரே டைஜஷன் ப்ராப்ளம் ஆகுது சரி மூச்சு தான் நிம்மதியா இருக்கலாம்னு மேல போனாலும் அங்க மூச்சு இருக்க முடியல ஒரே கழிவா இருக்கு இதனால இனமே அழிஞ்சிரும் போல இருக்கு கூடிய சீக்கிரம் நானும் அழிஞ்சிரும் போல இருக்கு நம்ம மட்டுமா பாதிக்கப்பட்டோமோ இல்ல வேற யாரனா இருக்காங்களா குட்க இந்த காஃபி கொண்டா வந்துடா ஆக்கு புத்தா டேய் 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 என்ன ஆக்கு புத்து உங்களுக்கு ஏதோ புத்தி இருக்கு ஆமாப்பா இது பேர் தா செரஞ்சி நெல குப்பையா கொட்டிறாங்க அது என் மேல எல்லாம் ஈஸியா குத்திருது பா இதனால என்ன ஆபத்து என்ன பாதிப்பா இந்த செரஞ்சிக்குள்ள மருந்துலாம் இருக்குது பா அது உடம்பல ஏறி என் சொந்தக்காரங்க நிறைய பேர் செத்து போயிட்டாங்க கூடிய சீக்கிரம் நானும் செத்து போயிருவேன் நினைக்கிறேன் ஒருத்த என்னன்னா முள்ளு குத்தி வச்சுங்கிறான் இன்னொருத்த என்னன்னா கழுத்துல வளமாட்டி வச்சுங்கிறான் ஆக மொத்தத்துல ஒரு இலவு உலக போகுது ஆமாப்பா சரி நம்ம எல்லாம் இங்க இருக்கோமே மரம் எப்படி இருக்கு போய் பாத்துட்டு வரலாமா வாங்கப்பா போய் பாட்டு வருவோம் மெடியேஷன் கடல கொட்டுங்கப்பா வாங்க இந்த வழியா போலாம் நீங்க மரம் நகர முடியாது மனுஷங்க சுவாசிக்க எழுபது பர்சன்ட் ஆக்சிஜன் நாங்கள் தான் தருவோம் ஆனால் அவங்க எங்கள் மேலே குப்பையை கொட்டி எங்களே சுவாசிக்க விடாமல் பண்ணிடுறாங்க இப்படி தான் நிலத்தில் உள்ள நீ வேஸ்ட்டு மெடி வேஸ்ட்டு எல்லாத்தையும் கடலில் வந்து கொட்டிக்கிட்டு இருக்கோம் அதனால என்ன ஆகுது அங்கே உள்ள மீன்லாம் அதை சாப்பிடுது அந்த மீன் எடுத்து நம்ம சாப்பிட்டுக்கிட்டு இருக்கோம் ரீசெண்டாக ஒரு ரிசர்ச்சில் கூட சொல்லியிருக்காங்க ஹியூமன் பிளட்டில் எல்லா பிளட்லையும் பிளாஸ்டிக் வர ஆரம்பிச்சிருச்சு ரிசர்ச்சில் ரீசெண்டாக ப்ரூவ் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க ஆமா நீங்க என்ன நினைச்சிட்டு இருக்கீங்க நிலத்துல இருக்க மரத்துல இருந்தா நமக்கு ஆக்சிஜன் கிடைக்குதுன்னா அதெல்லாம் ஒண்ணும் இல்ல கடல்ல இருக்கிற மரத்துல இருந்துதான் நிலத்துல இருக்க மரத்தை விட அதிகமான ஆக்சிஜன் கிடைச்சுக்கிட்டு இருக்கு இத பாக்குறவங்களுக்கு எல்லாம் அப்படியே கடல் பக்கத்துல போனோம்னா நீங்க ரொம்ப சுத்தமா இருக்கணும் சுகாதாரமா இருக்கணும் அப்படின்லாம் சொல்ல வரல ஏதோ உங்களால முடிஞ்ச ஒரு சின்ன சேஞ்ச் அந்த பிளாஸ்டிக் போடாம இருந்தா அதுவே எங்களுக்கு பெரிய சந்தோஷம் தான்
that was a wonderful theater act by the students of the viscom team thank you visual communication department for the effort thank you thank you urad sir thank you vipin sir as well thank you. thanks to dr nazmi ma'am So thank you, that's really it's a wonderful theater act sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you proceeding now i invite dr v ganesh kumar scientist e center for ocean research to deliver the vote of thanks good morning to one and all thanks for joining the world ocean sir day. your voice not audible sir ganesh is it audible now sir Can you hear us, Somya? Somya, our voice is clear. Yes, sir. Your voice is audible, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. Thank you, sir. Sincere thanks to Honorable Chancellor, Madam Dr. Marijana Johnson, President, sir Dr. Maria Johnson, Vice President, sir Mr. J. Arun Chelvin, Vice President, Madam Ms. Maria Bernice Tamarasi, and Vice Chancellor, Madam Dr. T. Sachin Prabha for all their support in organizing World Ocean Day. On behalf of Center for Ocean Research and Department of Visual Communication, I wish to thank our Direct Research Madam, Dr. B. Shreela Rani, for her guidance and support in organizing all the programs successfully. I express our sincere thanks to ocean research expert, Dr. R. Prabhakaran Sir, Consultant, Deep Ocean Mission, Royal Species Six, National Institute of Ocean Technology, Ministry of Earth Sciences, Chennai, for its valuable lecture and input on ocean health and its participate in making the world. Sir. It's a source of inspiration. The Center for Ocean Research is guiding and motivating us in all our research activities for more than a decade. Thank you, sir. Thanks to the students of Department of Visual Communication for the latest show for giving an important message to all of us that trash is posing serious problems to oceans around the world. I thank Mr. Ivaraj, Department of Visual Communication, for his coordination and support in this latest show. I acknowledge YAS, NCSC, and BSC for their support in organizing expert lecture program. I thank Satya Bama, YAS team members, Dr. D. Ipakandan, Head Center for Ocean Research, Dr. N. Nasmi, Head Department of Visual Communication, Dr. L. Stanley Abraham, Scientist E. Center for Ocean Research, and Mr. E. R. Amal Rajesh, Vimal Rajesh, Assistant Professor, Department of Visual Communication, for all their support. I thank all the participants for joining the webinar on World Ocean Day, and here we all will take forward the theme: Revitalization for Collective Action for Ocean. I thank all my colleagues and research scholars of Center for Ocean Research, and special mention to Ms. Soumya Prasad for moderating and technically supporting this webinar successfully. Once again, I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Parant sir. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you once again. It was indeed a wonderful resource talk and a wonderful skit presentation by the students of the Viscom team. I thank our resource person, Dr. Kripakaran sir, the students of Viscom, the Viscom team, and all the participants for joining us today. We would like to conclude today's program by saying that the oceans are not our garbage cans. It is up to us to maintain the ocean's cleanliness and purity for our future generations. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you, sir.